My statement to you today is, we are going to make it to land safely, some way, somehow. We all know the story of the wicked Saul. He was going through all the land persecuting all the believers. Saul really believed he was doing the work of God. How many are doing everything they can to come against the believers across the world and they believe they are doing the work of God? <clears throat> he was killing and he was persecuting the people of the way. He even held the coats of those who were stoning Stephen to death. So he was a participant even in murderers. If he were living today and he would be doing those same things, he would be counted among some of our worst terrorists that seem to be loose in our world. But God met him one day as he was traveling to the road to Damascus. He was going there to persecute more believers. He was going there in the will of God, so he thought, to take out more believers. And God struck him down. And when he was struck down, he was struck blind. And immediately he called out, Lord, who are you? Isn't that amazing? He knew immediately someone bigger than him was in control of the whole situation. And Jesus answered, I am Jesus of Nazareth, whom you are persecuting. He wasn't persecuting flesh and blood like he thought. He was persecuting Jesus. And it's the same way today. When the enemy comes against God's people, they may think that they're coming against flesh and blood, but they're coming against Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus of Nazareth is taking note. God sent Ananias to lay hands on Saul. And the word that tells us that immediately when Ananias laid hands on Saul, his eyes were open and scales fell from his eyes. I believe that that day scales not only fell from his physical eyes and he could see, but scales fell from his spiritual eyes and suddenly he could see spiritually and he could have revelation from the Lord. His name was changed from Saul to Paul, and he became on fire for God. He fought as much and as hard for God, the true God, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. He fought as far, hard for him as he had, thinking he was fighting for God when he was fighting against the believers. God inspired him to write much of the New Testament out of which we have learned so much about our Lord Jesus Christ and much insight as how we are as believers. One day Paul was arrested for speaking out so boldly and doing the works of God. And as a prisoner, and because he had appealed to Caesar, he was put on a boat to sail to Italy. The sailing became more and more difficult as it, they went and they were finally able to land at a place called Fair Havens. And Paul warned them, don't go any further. If we go any further, we're going to grow into much danger and we're going to have a loss of everything and even possibly the loss of lives. But they decided they knew better and they pushed forward. Their thinking was that where they were wasn't a good place to winter and they could overcome the storm. How many times do our thoughts and our plans come in to, to give us difficulty and to make us think that we know better than God? We can plan it out better than leaning on God. We can figure it all out. Anyone else out there have difficulty with that? I know I do. And I, I want to do what's right. 
So my mind will think, well, maybe I should do this, and then, well, no, maybe I should do that. And we become so paralyzed in that kind of thinking because we want to do what's right, and yet we don't have direction because we can't think our own direction out, and we totally stop doing anything because we are paralyzed. Paul was a prisoner. And even beyond what he warned and what he said to the people, it was beyond his control. There was not one thing he could do about his situation. I've been in many of those times when there was not one thing I could do to change my situation. If God didn't show up on the scene, it was bye-bye. There was no way I could plan. There was no way I could think. There was no way I could explore. It was a closed door, so it seemed. But I'm telling you today, we're in the year of the open door. I'm expecting open doors in all of our situations. I'm expecting that that looks like a brick wall to come open and we walk through in the glory and the magnificence of our Lord Jesus Christ. The only thing that we can understand is Jesus Christ is in control and we rest in him and believe his word. Jesus is the one who will never leave us. Jesus is the one who said, Lo, I am with you even to the end of this age. Matthew 28, 20. Jesus is the one who is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, 8. If he did it before, he'll do it again. And not only that, even if he didn't do it before, he is Jesus Christ of Nazareth, and he can cause a whole different situation to arise and an answer to come. Jesus is the one who is our righteousness, Romans 5, 21. Jesus is the one who is our Savior, 1 John 4, 14. Jesus is the one who was and who is our healer, Isaiah 53, 5 and 2 Peter 2, 24. Jesus is the one who is our peace, Ephesians 2, 14. Jesus is the one who provides, Ephesians 3, 16 and Philippians 4, 19. So these sailors took off with Paul's dire warning ringing in their ears because they knew better. The wind seemed soft and seemed like lovely weather when they took off, when they left port. But the further they sailed, the worse the weather became until they were in the midst of a great tempest. They started throwing all kinds of things overboard to lighten the load of the boat. The sun and the stars disappeared, and they were without light and without food for many days. Then Acts 27, 21. But after long abstinence from food, then Paul stood in the midst of them, and he said, Men, you should have listened to me. I love that. Don't we want to say that to people when things happen? Men, you should have listened to me. And you should not have sailed from Crete but, and incurred this disaster and loss. But now I urge you to take heart. He had to get at them first, but then he started the encouragement. I want you to take heart, for there will be no loss of life among you, but only of the ship. For there stood by me this night an angel of the God to whom I belong and whom I serve. And he said to me, Do not be afraid, Paul. You must be brought before Caesar. And indeed, God has granted you all of those who sail with you. Children of God, we are in position for God to not only save us, but to save all that are even with us. Therefore, take heart, Paul continued, for I believe God that it shall be just as it was told me. However, we must run aground on a certain island. About the 14th night, they were finally able to draw all, drop all four anchors into the water, and they laid there and wished for the day. 
some of the sailors tried to escape and they let down a skiff into which they were planning to get in and go to shore. And Paul said to the centurion and the soldiers, unless these men stay with the boat and stay in the ship, you cannot be saved. Then the soldiers cut away the ropes of the skiff and let it fall off. We must stay with the ship. The ship for us is Jesus Christ. We must stay with him in spite of the tempest, in spite of the storm, in spite of the situations that are swirling around us. And as the day began to dawn, Paul implored them all to eat so they could be nourished. And he told them, not a hair will fall from the head of any of you. He heard a word from God, and it was a sure word, and he believed it even though it had not happened yet. He believed the word of the Lord that had come to him. And when he had said these things, he took bread and he gave thanks to God in the presence of them all. And when he had broken it, he began to eat. Then they were all encouraged, and they also took food themselves. And in all, there were 276 persons on the ship. I love the way the Lord gives us a count of different situations. And in this place, there were 276 persons on that ship. Not a one of them were going to be lost. Not even a one of them was going to lose a hair off their head. They ran the ship aground because the stern was breaking up because of the storm. And the soldiers wanted to kill all the prisoners because they were afraid they would escape. But the centurion, wanting to save Paul, Paul had found favor in the eyes of the centurion, and the centurion kept them from their purpose and commanded those that could swim to jump overboard first and get to land, and the rest, some on boards and some on parts of the ship. And so it was that they all escaped safely to land. It may be that we don't feel like we can swim in our circumstances today. It may be that our circumstances seem to be swirling around us and it may seem that we uh, feel like we're in the, uh, 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 the, the hurricane or the tornado, right in the eye of that tornado. And it seems like everything around us is being destroyed. Everything in the path of that tornado is taking out everything. But I want you to know Jesus Christ has made a way somehow. And in the midst of the swirling waters, in the midst of the swirling storm, in the midst of the eye of that tornado, he doesn't intend to lose a one of us. I want to encourage you this morning. Our God is real. Our God is true. Our God is faithful. If there's one thing I've said over the years, particularly since my husband, H.L., went to be with the Lord, November 23, 1999, the words I have said over and over, our God is faithful. And when there's come situations in my life that there did not seem to be a way out in the most unexpected ways God has met my need. And I'm saying to you today, God intends to meet your need and God intends to meet my need. It may not be in the way that we can think with our mind and our thoughts can conjure up. It will, may be totally and probably will be completely off the scale of anything we can think. And we may have to grab a board or a part of the ship, but we're going to land safely. Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. Jesus, our provider. Jesus, our healer. Jesus, our peace, will bring us to our destination that he has designed for us.
from the beginning of the world. I bless you today. I bless you that the faith of the Lord Jesus Christ in hearing the word of the Lord today, faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And as you've heard the word of God, whatever your situation is, may you grab that piece as it were a piece of the board or a piece of the ship. May you grab hold of that and take hold of that and come to land safely away from the storm, away from the situation, away from all of that that seems to be overtaking you at this time. Let's pray. Father, I just bless you, and I praise your name. I thank you, Lord, for the encouragement of your word. I thank you, Lord, that when no matter where we are in life, when we hear your word and when we speak your word, when it's not just by rote and just out of our mind and it isn't just a religious saying, but when out of the depths of our heart we speak and we speak life and life more abundantly, Lord, out of the depths of our heart, the word comes forth and our hearts are lightened. Our load is lightened. And Father, we have the faith to come to the shore safely. I pray that for all of you today. And if you don't know this Jesus, I want you to know he loves you with an everlasting love. Before you were ever born, before your parents ever thought about even meeting each other, let alone producing you, God had you in mind. He loves you so much. He died on the cross for you. He took all your sins. He's already forgiven you. Your problem is, and your situation is, you have to receive what he's already done. We all have to receive anything that he's already done for us. But I want you to know today, our Jesus died on the cross. He took your sins and he washed them. When you receive him and you say, Jesus, come into my heart, I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you are Lord and God has raised you from the dead. When you come to that point in your life, God doesn't just cover your sins. He washes them away. Never, never to remember them again. I pray for you today that you will lift your eyes to heaven today and you will lift your hearts to him and you will say, Jesus, come into my life. I receive you as my Lord and Savior in Jesus' name. God bless you.